Since the 1980s, Boston has been setting goals for community benefit from major development projects. The goals specify jobs for Boston residents, minorities, and women, but there's also a long history of developers who fall short. One exception to that history is what happened with the development of a new community center in the Dudley Triangle area of Dorchester and Roxbury. Playing a role in the development of the Croc Community Center was the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative. The group has also done a study on the project with hopes of setting a new standard for other developments. Joining us as our guest from the initiative is a community organizer and planner who's also a member of the Boston Employment Commission. Travis Watson, uh, thank you very much for being with us, Travis. Thank you, it's a pleasure. If you live in the Dudley Triangle area, you, you can't miss this sprawling community center, but for folks who don't know that area too well, talk about how big a deal this is for the community, the jobs, and just the money pouring into it. Yeah, sure. Uh, community center has been a vision and a dream of the Dudley community going back about 25 years. Uh, when the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative was formed in the late to mid 80s, um, that was one of the first visions, especially for some of the young people. So the vision, the dream had been there. It became reality once the community center was built. Um, with it came a lot of construction jobs, a lot of money going back into the city, as well as some full-time jobs that were working closely with the Salvation Army and hopes to get more of our residents um, into those full-time jobs. Now, the uh, actual uh, goals in the uh, resident jobs policy, I think is about 50% residents. Correct. Uh, was it for minorities and women? 25% uh, minority and 10% women. And how close? did this project come to that? We actually had higher goals. So the goals that we took on this project are uh, following the Roxbury Strategic Master Plan, which was 51% resident, 51% minority, and 15% female. So when we set that up right off the bat, folks are a little skeptical. We came in and finished a project right around 49% Boston residents, um, right around 48% minority, and around 9% females. Well, how did that happen? I mean, I mean, you can say that Suffolk Construction, which I think was the, the main contractor, Correct. they did well, but, but it wasn't just the contractor. Not at all. It was really the vision and the leadership of community residents. DSNI played a role of convening folks, that is the owner of the project, the Salvation Army, the general contractor, Suffolk Construction, and about 20 to 25 neighborhood residents and activists that pushed for different um, agendas on the project. Some were really pushing for high women numbers and had best practices that, lived, that they learned through the years on other projects and kind of brought some of that knowledge to this project. Well, two things that, that I hear year after year is that here's a project where the people in the hard hats don't look like they're from the same neighborhood. And on the other hand, I hear people say year after year there are enough people in the neighborhood where they ought to be working there. So how did you make sure that you got enough people from the neighborhood who were, I guess, shovel ready? Sure. A lot of that came uh, about two and a half years before the sho first shovel even hit the ground. And that was a meeting with prospective workers, both open shop and union workers ahead of time. And more specifically, actually meeting with the business agents and the union leadership about two years before the project started. Explained our goals, see if they could meet the goals, and then start talking about what workers from our neighborhoods could actually um, work on the project. So what, what happened in the interim? Uh, because it was it some things that the unions did, some things that DSNI did to help the workers? I think it was actually a little bit mix of both. So I think the unions played a huge role on this project, really stepping up, showing us that they do have uh, the bodies, the uh, women, the minority, and residents within their ranks to fulfill our goals. And I think a lot of it came from the community really pushing to make sure that the uh, general contractor and owner were accountable. Um, I really can't speak highly enough of Suffolk Construction's role in this project. I think prior to this, they did not have the best uh, reputation within the community, Roxbury, Dorchester, for hiring residents, minorities, and females. But in this project, they really um, said, you know, we're going to change the way we do business. Let's sit down, let's meet, and make sure that we fulfill these goals. And they did that. I also understand from, from your study is that there was some professional development going on here too, right? Correct, yeah. One of the things that uh, Jim Grossman, who's a project executive over at Suffolk, did, for example, we had a local minority contractor who wanted to bid on some of the taping on the project. He was unfamiliar with Suffolk's estimating software, so what Jimmy did over at Suffolk was brought the gentleman in, went over the estimating software with him, two sessions, free of charge, got him in line, got his estimate up to where Suffolk said, mm, yeah, we can work with you, and that individual was able to do some taping on the project. Though things did turn out pretty well at the end here, there were some uh, rough spots in the middle, some non-compliance, and talk about sure. how DSNI dealt with that. Yeah, so that's true with any project. Every once in a while, you're going to have a knucklehead contractor who will come in. Or say, a subcontractor. Or a subcontractor and say, this is the way we're used to doing business. You can't tell me who to hire. 
What we did is we worked closely with the BRA, um, Suffolk Construction, and hold corrective action meetings. At those meetings, we sat down with the subcontractors, explained the goals, asked them, you know, you said you're going to meet these goals. Is there anything we can help you with? And in most cases, sitting down with them and bringing them prospective candidates that we knew of right in the community played a huge difference. So folks like Youth Build Boston, who does a tremendous job with pre-apprenticeship program with our young people, was willing and able and had those individuals ready. So in case a sub said, oh, sorry, I don't have a female painter, for example, we could say, well, Youth Build, you have a female painter, and kind of filter them into the project that way. Talk about how important this was as far as the neighborhood impact, because when you have um, uh, local people getting the jobs, there's some earning power, and I guess maybe there are even some other things that just change the climate of the neighborhood, maybe. Absolutely. There's more activity. And one thing that's very, uh, that I love about the Dudley neighborhood is it has a lot of mom and pop shops. Ideal sub shop. The best sub shop, I think, in Boston. Well, a lot of the construction workers would walk that quarter mile from the project reinvest their dollars back into the community and buy their subs at Ideal. Or maybe the uh, food project who does a tremendous job with the local farmer's market. Some of those construction workers might hit the farmer's market after. And again, they're reinvesting the money that they're making in the city back into the city and particularly our neighborhood. Uh, now, given this is a big project and DSNI is a, is a very well-developed neighborhood group, to what extent can you do the same thing in other neighborhoods with comparable projects? It can be done. It can be done with proven. It can be done. Um, I think one of the things that I'm hoping with this publication is that other folks, developers, neighborhood activists, don't have to, you know, for other words, reinvent the wheel. I'm hoping that this can be a tool, the best practice booklet, that they can use so they can actually start where we finished off. Thank you very much for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Travis Watson from the W Street Neighborhood Initiative.